This episode of Dr. Drew After Dark is brought to you by Bespoke Post, but I'll tell you a little more about that later. Right now, let's get on with the show. Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey, everybody, welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Of course, keep those voice messages messages coming at 818-253-1693 and the emails at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. Check out everything at drdrew.com. Also, sign up at drdrew.tv for the Ask Dr. Drew show. We set out a quick blast just when we're going live with that. And it's a live call-in show. We may have something very similar coming here at After Dark as well, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, on the weekends, we do the streaming show on multiple platforms, and you can call in and be a part of that. Tom Green. All to right. Show. Yeah. It's good to be doing this again. It's good to see you. And We've done this before, kind of this kind of thing you together. You have right? done a lot of things like this together. Yeah. The last th- time we were together, you were in the interviewer seat yeah. and you were playing Larry King. You've interviewed me. I've interviewed you before. It was his Webovision yeah. show at that time, his yeah. streaming show, right? Yeah. I've been guest hosting Larry King. You did my Webovision at my house uh, years so, ago. So let's, let's yeah. drill in on Webovision you, for a second. Yeah, we'll start. There. Tom you Green start. was way ahead of everybody on digital products. A mil, like literally like too far ahead of everybody. Yeah. Like literally. Yeah. There were people watching though back then. I know. Because there was nobody else doing a podcast. Yeah. There was nothing. So you, you streamed well, we were and the, podcasted it, right? Well, no, it was just streaming. Yeah. It was streaming. It yeah. was, I don't think the word podcast really right. was didn't around exist. yet back in. And you called it Webovision. The, yeah. The worldwide web. On the worldwide uh, national internet. Yeah. <laughs> From coast to coast on the national yeah. internet. Yeah. And you did it out of your living room. Yeah. With your dogs. Yeah. I remember, you'll find this online somewhere, Dadav. I remember singing to a parrot. Yeah, that's right. My parrot, uh, Rex. Uh, Rex. Yeah. My dog is named Rex since then, so interestingly. Yeah. And your dogs were huskies, which I loved, and they don't no longer with us. No. But that was like 15 years ago. I mean, yes. of course they're no longer with they us. They passed away about just two years ago, though. Three oh, years wow. ago, maybe, yeah. One of them so, kept biting me, as I remember. One of my line, one kept biting me. Biting? Yeah, there was some biting. The dog was biting you? Yes, there was biting. Nibbling, maybe. Uh, nipping. 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 Yeah, nipping. But didn't actually draw blood or anything no 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 i would I, been... I, I get that breed i like that breed a lot. that was cujo cujo my dog cujo yeah, yeah. cujo was not very tolerant yeah yeah um well yeah though i those were good girls you know uh but it's uh, you know do you still live up there i still live in the same house wow no studio anymore but i'm touring so much it's kind of hard to have pets now you know because I'm, tra- yeah. I'm never home anymore so yeah yeah you know. did you find the parrot video Oh, we have parrot video. No, 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 I have not. Take a look. Well, you know, I got rid I'm of the parrot. All these other videos for you. What are the videos? The yeah. ones that you specifically asked for when uh, you said you wanted less tame videos for. Tom. Oh no, we'll get to that. Don't yeah. you worry. We're now we're doing the nicey nice part. We're That's gonna cool. we're gonna put Tom through the paces later. Yeah, yeah. So, That's cool. Got to loosen him up. Talk about himself. This is a pretty awesome uh, uh, facility here. Yeah. Uh, the uh, your mom's house ground zero. This is it. Uh, mission control. Yeah, uh, this is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. What people can't see is we're when we look over this way, we literally see your mom's house. That's yeah. your mom's house over there. It's unbelievable. And this is uh, Sickler. This is the Honeydew. Yeah, uh, and then it's also my show over on this side. It's amazing. And the two, the, you guys do the two bears, one cave here too, right? Yep, two bears, yeah. one cave. Where yeah. my mom's at. We're uh, in the belly of the beast. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah. well, well done. Um, so you're living up in the hill still. Is that, does Kathy Griffin live near you? I feel like that was the same area. Uh, I don't know where she lives. Okay, actually, then but, probably uh, not. I, I've heard she lives up around there. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I, I remember being up there once, going, "Oh, I think Tom lives around here." Yeah, right everybody there. lives around there, though. Yeah, like yeah. everybody. So it's the center of Hollywood. It's it. Well, I'm it, right in the. I'm I'm in the well, I'm in the Hollywood to Hills. Be, to be fair, yeah. it's it's. A perfect, Let's not give him exact location. No, I know. <laughs> I'll give him the exact address. To, to be fair, it's it's a perfect location to be able to get anywhere else. Yeah, it is good, yeah. Yeah, and it's a nice hillside and everything's yeah. cool up there. I live in Hollywood. I know that. Pretty pretty fancy, huh? Yeah. You grew up where? <laughs> uh, I live in, I'm from Canada, Ottawa, Canada. What part? Um, and it's... Uh, it's uh, Ottawa, which is the capital. Oh, you're in, uh, not the, just the, the, the Gloucester, the, province the east end. Ottawa. Okay. Mons, 2171 Monson Crescent. And we've was all, my, we all was saw. My I don't live there anymore, but that was my address growing up. Your parents still I, there? I painted that house plaid. Your parents still, uh, right. My parents, are, my parents are uh, living uh, in Ottawa now, yeah. So yep. this is the, we all saw that house on the Tom Green show. But not in that house anymore. They left that house. Okay, but we saw that house on the Tom Green show. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw Monica Lewinsky in that house. That's right, yeah. Monica Lewinsky. Absolutely. Now you had, you were one of the first to put her back on on TV. Yeah, so, well, she wasn't doing interviews at the time. Right. I mean, she remember, she was the biggest news story in the world at the time. Yeah. No, she wouldn't do any interviews. Have you, have you watched the Clinton uh, uh, affair, I think it's called, 
the the multi part series on Netflix. No, I haven't. No, no. It's re she's very good on it. Okay, yeah. She does an interview and she yeah. talks about what happened to her all and it, day. Uh, it is fucking stunning. What, yeah. what she was putting up with. It, well, she was no a idea. good sport. She was a real good sport. See, she she um, was friends with somebody who was working on her show. One of our writers and. Uh, she was coming down to the show a lot, and then uh, her brother was a big fan of the show at the time. Uh. And she, she, we said, hey, yeah, let's let's do a, a like a one hour special with Monica Lewinsky, yeah. where we started out. We take her up to Ottawa, and we wake up my parents in the middle of the night, and they don't know Monica Lewinsky's in town, and they don't know I'm in town. We barge into my parents' bedroom with Monica Lewinsky. You know, you gotta remember at the time, like it was sort of like the impeachment trial yeah. right now yeah. like it was all I mean, it was any, even bigger it like it was like. yeah it was all anybody was yeah. talking now about. it feels like this one people are sort of t uh, uh, a certain percent of the population yeah. is like oh, geez yeah you know and that was up, everybody was interested yeah in we that. ended up having a one hour sort of thing with her and it was a, it was a great show you went and out I, to lunch with your parents and yeah. her and stuff yeah we had the whole the, the, the fun of that show is we had the whole international media converged on Ottawa just to try to get a shot of Monica Lewinsky. God. And then we, we made a big uh, announcement. We, we went on a radio show and we announced that we're going to make an announcement the next day. So we went on a show to make an announcement. About an announcement. And the announcement was tomorrow there would be another announcement. <laughs> and then we went on and then we made that announcement on the roof of uh, the Little Beaver restaurant, it was called. The Little Beaver restaurant, uh, which uh, which is um, was basically a, a, a little chip stand type of thing yeah. and it was the middle of winter and we had to put a ladder up on the back of it and we showed up there like you know noon on a thursday or whatever and we go up on the roof and there's snow everywhere snow on the roof snow everywhere and there was probably about 500 members of the international media there with cameras satellite trucks showed up it was uh it was outrageous so but it, she was a good sport and she was funny and it was a real funny episode it's on youtube everything's on youtube how'd you get into comedy uh, I started uh, doing stand-up when I was a teenager, actually. 32 years ago, I started doing stand-up at Yuck Yucks in Ottawa. Oh, wow. And um, How did you get interested in that? You know, I, uh, I, was, I was always just kind of a goofy kid in school and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, just kind of goofing around and class clown, all that kind of stuff. And um, I like public speaking. Oh, I would, I would do really well in my public speaking at a young age. That's class. interesting. Yeah, in the sixth grade, I did uh, a speech on comedy and uh, one for the school. So, so and you were it, interested in comedy? Yeah, got clearly. some big laughs. Yeah, that was that was when I was you know a little kid. What'd you get your first big laugh at? What'd you say? Do you remember? The big big laugh came because the teacher, the the judges tried to stump me, and I I really really felt like it was. Un unnecessary for them to have done this but you know they had to ask you a question after the speech so they she says to me this is in front of the whole school I'm like 12 or something like that how old are you in grade 6 11 12 yeah yeah okay cool I I was the, the age you were supposed to be we say 6th grade here yeah 6th grade yeah grade 6 yeah yeah grade 6 yeah <laughs> um, I said that the first time I said 6th grade it's hard for me to say I that know. it doesn't <laughs> even feel normal saying that grade it's, 6 it's weirder here you say grade 6 than yeah. you to say 6th grade grade but 6 go ahead. Yeah. the Canadians uh, do things different up there. But uh, so anyways, so at the end of the speech, she says, you said in your speech that uh, you, you use comedy, you can use comedy to get out of a difficult situation. But you didn't give me an example of that. Give me an example of that. And so a joke just popped into my head that I read in a joke book, but I just said it because it worked perfectly for it. I said, uh, I said, uh, yeah, uh, I brought, last time I brought my report card from home from school, uh, I gave it to my dad and I said, Dad, um, my marks are underwater. And when my dad said, what do you mean? I said, they're below sea level. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's but good. it was just such a massive laugh, I remember. Yeah. I think the kids... You know, had never, you know, obviously had never been to a comedy show before. We were all 12. Right. But also, it was just, I think they were relieved for me because the speech had kind of goofy elements in it. I had some props and stuff. It was pretty goofy. And, uh, and there was a lot of laughs in the speech itself. But I remember it was such a massive outpouring of energy from the whole, cl the whole school. The audience, yeah. And I just felt such a rush from it. Yeah, I yeah. remember it to this day. 
and and I'd never felt anything like it. And I went out into the schoolyard during the break while they were deciding who won. And uh, did you win? Uh, yeah, I did win. Uh -huh. And all the kids were coming up to me going, how did you think of that so fast? And well, my, that was so hilarious, mm -hmm. right? And it was just the best feeling. I'd never really felt like kind of so popular. That's, that's I felt really popular all of a sudden Yeah, yeah I get it. I all totally the kids liked me, you know? No, I get it. So uh, and, I, and I wanted to recreate that. So I'm I, surprised yeah. of all the comedians I've spoken to, a lot of them don't have, many of them do, yeah. have, a, have a moment where they got hooked. Yeah. Uh, and that's your hook, right? You were in it. That, that was when I knew I wanted yeah. to do comedy in, yeah. of some Isn't it interesting, form. though, it's almost like heroin. Yeah. Oh, that's what I want to be. I what started watching Johnny Carson all the time and, and uh, really kind of absorbing comedy movies. But it wasn't until I was about 16 years old uh, in high school that we discovered the comedy club. Yuck Yucks in uh, Ottawa, which is still there, still managed by a big uh, one. Howie Wagman. He's still uh, just Howard Wagman still manages the club and runs the club, and uh, I perform there all the time when I go home to visit the family for fun. I, we do shows there, and, and uh, but I remember uh, that was that was it. I started doing comedy in high school, did it for all my high school years, and then I went back to school and studied broadcasting and started the Tom Green Show. Was was it similar to like what playing guitar would do for a mu musician? In terms of what it did for you socially um like if you were in a rock band and, and succeeded in a rock band would it have been the similar kind of a not really no no it's like I, I mean like 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 attracting babes and stuff it's part of it i mean you said it was being being it never popular. really it never really worked for me in high school at yeah. least you know yeah. it was not it was i was a i was a i was doing like it was first of all like calm doing stand up you know in 1989 wasn't when you're in high big. school it yeah. wasn't sort of a I mean, I'm sure it was big in New York City, and you know, obviously, it was stand-up comedy was a huge thing, but but not in a corner of Ottawa. Yeah, not like, so much. There wasn't. There wasn't like. There, I think there were maybe like six or seven people doing open mic in yeah. Ottawa. Yeah. But Norm Macdonald was from Ottawa, and uh, Harland Williams would perform through Yuck Yucks all the time. Little known they fact had, about Harlan, he was a. Rain, or either a, a forest a, ranger. He was a yeah. forest ranger in yeah. Ottawa. One of my I, good friends. Yeah, yeah, that's from too Northern funny. Ontario. But so they, they, you know, they were, they were, they hadn't, they hadn't become famous yet. Yeah. But they were touring across Canada, and they were my favorites. And I'd go see Harland and Norm every time they came through, and would just sort of watch them in amazement, thinking, how amazing is that? That tomorrow they're going to go get on a plane. And they're going to fly off to Edmonton, yeah. and they're going to get to do jokes and get paid to do it. Yeah. It was an unbelievable dream that, it, that 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 they were doing. And so, you know, it's kind of funny how things go full circle. Because, you know, I went and I started the TV show and public access, and then went on MTV, and all the stuff that happened happened. Uh, but but you know, here you know, ten years ago, I started fully doing stand up again, full time, and I've been on. I've been on the road now for the last 10 years, pretty much full-time all I, over the world. I and I saw love your stand-up with uh, Steve-O back yes. in Vegas. It was great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that absolutely. Yeah. That was quite a while ago now. It was probably seven yeah. years, six or seven it years ago. It was uh, yeah. the weekend before I had my prostate surgery. Yes, I remember. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, we uh, you were very that. kind. It was a yeah. very important conversation you had with me about not becoming the guy with one ball or not becoming the guy with no prostate. Yeah, but cancer survivors. Yeah, here we yeah. are. But you, you said, talk about it, but don't make it your story, you know, sort of thing. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, it's uh you know I uh, I've I've found it's been uh, really a nice side uh, effect of having done filmed my whole surgery right we did yeah. film my whole surgery and we put it all on MTV it was the last episode of the Tom Green Show it was called the Cancer Special and uh, and I have had hundreds and hundreds of people write letters and emails and come up to me after my stand up shows who. Uh, found their testicular cancer because of that show. Wow. Yeah. That's and crazy. And they, they come up to me with their wives, huh. with like tears in their eyes, mm. thanking me for putting that show in the air because they were 16 years old and they, you know, had felt something weird and they were embarrassed and they'd never even occurred to them and it would be cancer and they went right. to the doctor for it. So I do try to, I don't try to, sh I don't shy away from talking about testicular cancer in my standup. I mention it sometimes, you know, because it's, uh, you know, um, you know, I, I, I poke fun of myself a little bit, but also, uh, you know, uh, I know that just talking about it is good because early detection yeah. is the key. Yeah, that's, that's, very the, that's your way of surviving from all For many cancers, for many cancers, that's yeah. true. Yeah. And uh, it was our mutual manager, Howard Lapidus, 
who called me, told me, and said, where do I take him? I said, that's I know, right. I know exactly where to that's go. That's right. And you, you helped me very much, uh, very I much. Just, I just know where you get. At that point in history, I know exactly where to get the surgery done. Got me into the good, the yeah. good, good hospital and here in worked, L.A. And that worked out well. Yeah. Um, but we lost Howard recently, yeah. which is yeah. Rest in peace, Howard. We love you, man. Uh, we know he's probably listening uh, up there to the podcast, right? If, if it's possible, he is. You know, right. If there's somebody who could do that, sure, it's him. We're broadcasting into yeah. heaven, I'm sure. Sure, right? why not? The yeah. WebOvision. Yeah. What, 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 what version of the national WebOvision broadcast goes to heaven? Yeah, this one right here. I'm yeah. sure we're yeah. he's listening right now. Well, you know, I mean, we both uh, got to work with the great, uh, the late, great Howard Lapidus. And for a long time, John Ferreter. Yeah, and John Ferreter. And, and they, he was my agent for a long time. Yeah. And J Howard was the manager. And they both died within like three days of each other. They both died. Both young. Yeah, they both died this year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for Howard, I wouldn't, uh, my show would not have been on MTV. You were on MTV at the time mm -hmm. with Adam Carolla yep. doing Love Line. And uh, I was doing my show in Canada. And, in and fact, I'll never forget. He went up there to see the you got, there's the like, Mike Bullard show. Yeah, but there's like a comedy week up there or something. Mm, okay. The comedy festival, I think you were, must have been part of. Or I was on the Mike Bullard show. All right, but he goes yeah. up. Howard went up there, I think, for the festival, and he yeah. found you. And I'll never forget this phone conversation. He went, "Wait to see this one I found up there." Yeah, You're, this is <laughs> you think you think Adam's funny. Wait to see what I found in Canada. Yeah, yeah, and that was that. And then then uh, six months later, we were on MTV, and yeah. uh, it was it was uh, it was crazy. So I. I think you know this. I was a huge fan. We, we have lots of, I've, when you really think about the overlaps in our lives, we had the same executive producer as the Tom Green show I had on the MHLN show, Bert Dubrow. Yes, love Bert Dubrow. Yeah, and so it's weird. We have the same everything. But uh, I was a huge fan of that show. Yeah. Huge fan of that show, and it did not last long enough. The, the new Tom Green show. The new Tom Green yeah. show, the one with the talk show. Yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, I just put a clip of that up on my Instagram today, That was a today, great actually show it was fun you know i liked i loved doing a nightly talk show uh you know it was sort of the reason why i wanted to do comedy in the first place because because i loved david letterman he was my hero uh all through high school mm -hmm. i loved late night with david letterman that was kimmel's thing too yeah i couldn't believe how funny it was and how excited i would be to watch it i would record it every night on on vhs beta max yeah <laughs> And um, and uh, so, yeah, it was fun doing a nightly talk show. I I I, I think that you know, I mean, I, I I was I was really enjoying it. I was definitely uh, would have loved to have kept doing it. But you know, I, I sometimes think that it must be. I'm, I sometimes think that I'm kind of glad that I didn't end up doing a late night talk show for twenty years. It would have pigeonholed you. I just feel you. like it would have been exhausting. Uh, yeah, yeah. It just, and stressful. Yeah, yeah. Most of those, you know, most guys that do those shows seem pretty stressed. Just out seem like way. every day. Yeah. You know, new show every day. Yeah. That being said, you know, if somebody called me tomorrow and asked me you to do, do it, it, I would do, do it instantly. Yeah. But that's because I, well, I did say that no HLN stuff. show every day, and that was a little yeah. different. A news hook show, but yeah. but that it, that was not that hard for me because that was just people tossing stuff out that I reacted to. Yeah. Rather than having to craft some resistant celebrity who doesn't doesn't want to really be there yeah, and yeah. find a way to make them talk. I also I'm a I was an early and huge fan of Freddie Got Fingered. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think history will has continuing to be and will even more so be kind to. Yeah, it's uh, it's been really kind of It was of ahead a, of its time. It's been kind of a weird uh couple of years actually because it always had a, a following. sort of a cult following. Yeah. But the last 2 or 3 years Something's happened. I don't know. Must I, I think somebody did a review of it on a big internet channel that a lot of young folks listen to. Yeah. And um, and it's just become this thing where everywhere I go, people are coming up to me and saying, Daddy, would you like some sausage? Or shouting out lines like, do the backwards man, yes. or I'm X-ray cat. Or they know all the lines for the movie and everywhere, like e everywhere in the world, every day. That to me is, that's good news. To kind of paint a picture of how weird my life is, like I don't think a day has gone by in the last 20 years where somebody hasn't walked up to me and said, Daddy, would you like some sausage? Oh, I, I, I'm guilty of having done that too. Like every, so, so, like every so single I've, day. I've been a couple of like those Like every days. single day. I, it's a great line. Like I, not one day. It's like a great I, line. Like I'll, I'll, if a I day think goes, I sung it to you. Yeah. Daddy, would you like some sausage? Yeah, every day. <laughs> every day. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. To me, that it's, makes it, perfect sense. It's cool though. I feel I've, it, it, it does actually really kind of uh, make me happy when that happens because, you know, I was, it was so brutally sort panned. of. Panned. 
panned by yeah. the critics yeah. and they were so mean about it so, listen, and uh, they were so sure of themselves I, oh, about how that, I, that I, they were right and, and I was and wrong I hadn't seen it at that yeah. point that's what made me want to go see it and I, yeah. I thought history will not be kind to these people yeah history will vindicate this movie I knew it I fucking knew it I, I got and, this line I do sometimes in my stand-up show when I talk about Freddy I don't I don't really do it anymore because but sometimes I'll talk about the old show and stuff in my stand-up not that often usually I'm just sort of telling jokes and doing new new material but sometimes I talk about stuff like that and um you know I'll say you know yell out a line from the movie and everyone in the audience will start it's yelling awesome. out lines they'll yeah. yell out all these lines and I'll act out the lines yeah and then I say okay now somebody shout out one line from the academy award-winning film the English patient <laughs> Silence. Right? There's not one. So I feel pretty good about it. I'm good thinking of taking you. it on Broadway, actually. Yeah, Freddie got fisted, I'm going to call it. So, uh, yeah, Broadway show. Can, I, can show. I be in it? Yeah. Daddy, I, would you I'm, like some I'm, sausage? We're, we're, it's, oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can sing it. I, yeah. You can sing. Daddy, yeah. would, you can do an opera version. Yeah, whatever you want. Daddy, I'm, would you I'm like in. some sausage? And we've lost also, uh, what's the name of the play that your dad? Uh, hmm? The, Rip Torn uh, also Rip Torn. passed away. Yeah, and, and this year. I, I wondered if that was maybe some of the resurgence too, because that guy Rip is such a fucking genius. Yeah, yeah. And then this was one of his funnier yeah. shows. You know, you, was, you, I sort of can't get enough of Rip Torn. Yeah, myself. he was a great, uh, good old boy on the on the show. You know, oh, he was you such, know, a, and he such was, an alcoholic man. Yeah, we, he's we, like old school alcoholic. He like was real deal stuff. He was cool. Yeah, he was cool. We filmed we filmed the movie in uh, Canada, in in Vancouver and um, on the weekend like he'd go fishing <laughs> and come back with like fresh salmon wow. that he'd caught and bring it and they'd cook it up for the crew and stuff and he was a it was a good guy oh my yeah, god yeah I was sad I, I, I had sort of lost he, touch with a, him in the last few years I mean like that's yeah. another the genius yeah. let me ask you this so because this is sort of something that I've been kind of uh, and I'm not even really sure the question I want to ask yet, but I do know I want to talk about this a little bit more about the fact that two of our very close friends and business associates yeah. passed away this year. Yeah. For me personally, those are that's really the first time I've ever had anybody close to me oh. die. Okay, ever you know, like okay. I've, I've been very fortunate. I haven't had any close friends die. I haven't okay. had any close family members die. My grandparents are the only people that have really been close to me that have passed away. Okay. So, you know, I find myself, you know, almost every day, certainly, at some point, I'll think about John or Howard, and then I'll sort of remember that they are no longer yeah. with us. Yes. And then it kind of like re-traumatizes the whole, the whole I, yeah. I just sort of get sad again yeah. about it, and I just really, I'm, I'm you know... It's like it's not like I didn't think about death constantly before this happened, you know. Like I'm, I'm Great. definitely it's, constantly it's a mood lifter. I'm constantly. I think maybe it's because of having cancer. I'm, I'm constantly, you know, in sort of a state of sort of near panic. You know, grati death. gratitude to be alive. Okay, so gratitude will panic get you about this. impending sort of what's next. When's it coming? I next. get it. I get it. You know, and that's one of the things that cancer does to you. It's like yeah. you, it makes you feel like all right. This, this was so out of the blue, yeah. so shocking. Yeah. When's the next shoe going to go? Every little yeah. pain, every yeah. little cough That's a is to thing. me is, yeah. is, is, is sheer panic-inducing. But now this has happened. So, so John's and, death was bizarre. Yeah, John's death right. was, that, that was, 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 was uh, definitely... Very unusual. Howard had a cancer. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and that was that. Yeah. Um, but they were both too young. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does make you put everything in perspective and start wondering about that stuff for sure. It like, should. Like, here's the thing that, like, I mean, not to get all philosophical or religious, but the thing that I find has been interesting and sad and, uh, you know, in some ways kind of, um, I don't know, thought provoking is. You know, when that happens, when it, when I'm reminded that each day that yeah. they're no longer with us, yeah. like I'll sort of say something to them mm. in my head, mm. like, "Hey, you know, you know, that's nice, guys. You know, I feel bad that this happened to you guys. Yeah. I hope you're listening up there." And I am having this sort of actual conscious belief. That they're actually getting the message. That a con connection. Like when I'm saying to yeah. you, like that Howard's yeah. probably listening to this, I actually kind of believe that, yeah. which is sort of um, surprising to me. 
also very common. Yeah. And I would never discourage anybody from that. Yeah. Some of it is our brains can't handle loss. Yeah. Like we just like can't fully get our head around it, which is why when it comes back to you as a as a direct conscious thought, it's shocking. Yeah. It's like it's hard to stay with it. Yeah. Our brains don't let us. And that's kind of a normal way of dealing with grief. It's a normal way of dealing with loss. And it's not anything unhealthy to have a relationship with whatever part of that person is left behind in you. Yeah. Which I believe is, I, I actually believe that that's more substantial than we know. Yeah. I start thinking like, you know how people say that, oh, maybe we're all living in a computer simulation. Well, or wait, listen. Like the Matrix. But listen, man, we're getting kind of way out there here. But but um, I did a podcast, a couple podcasts with a guy named Sean Carroll. Yeah. And uh, he will explain to you, he's a Caltech professor, that we're all just a giant wave equation, a wave function. Yeah. <laughs> just, we're part of a wave function. We're emergent properties of that wave, fu right. wave function. And, Energy and... And, and sp yeah. it's not even, it's below that. Okay. And space-time is actually an emergent property of this wave. Yeah. And so space-time doesn't really exist. Yeah. And there's such a thing called entanglement, which, you know, if I look at an electron here and look at an electron at the other side of the universe, they will be related. Related, connected. It, connected. And that's sort of like... It's entanglement. Kind of, I start thinking about that kind of stuff. Our brain can't go there and then in I start, any meaningful and, way. And, and the idea of it being poten potentially a computer simulation, I think about. You well, know, it very and I go, least, okay, well, if it's a computer and, and, simulation, maybe the idea that these friends of ours who were close to us passed, but they really went to this other dimension and we're still oh, able to knows? kind of communicate knows, but, with them. But, but I will tell you, because we only have this evolved yeah. little instrument in our skull, Yeah. It is the computer simulation. It, yeah. It's sort of an interface yeah. with the world. Yeah. Almost the way your your screen is on your computer. Yeah. All that stuff up there we make meaning of, it's nothing, a bunch of pixels yeah. that are just, it, it's an interface. And our brain makes an interface with the world. We're not seeing the world as it really is. So in a yeah. sense, it's a simulation of our own brain's functioning. Yeah. Right? In a sense. But who the fuck knows? We, we can't, our brain can't answer those things. Don't Don't spend a lot of time on it. I know. I'm, I am spending far too much yeah. time on it, though. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. You can and, get, uh, get, try to get, stay with the gratitude. Yeah. That's a much more productive thing. Are you, are you a depressive by nature? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, how do I answer that? Um, yes or no? I, I've, I'm doing a lot better now. I think I've, 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 I think I've gone through phases in my life. I had major depression when yeah. I was 19. Major yeah. depression. I think I went through a phase in my life... Uh, when I was probably drinking a bit too much. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't, you know, you know, they always say like alcohol is a depressant. Mm -hmm. And like, you kind of go, yeah, yeah, but I don't really believe you. Cause right. when I drink, I'm having so much fun. I'm feeling better. Yeah. Uh, and you know, when you're twenties, you know, you bounce back from a hangover the next day and it's no problem. Yeah. But then I think around like 40, you know, I'm 48 now around 40, I was probably drinking as much as I've ever drank, mm. but all of a sudden my body started reacting to it differently. Shocking. And I'm touring all the time, doing stand up, and I'm late nights, early mornings, and drinking. And uh, I, 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 I did sort of feel a period of, of sort of, sort of feeling pretty down. But you know, I've kind of, I haven't quit drinking. I'm not, I'm gonna, let's not get crazy. <laughs> You're but, a Canadian, after yeah. All. <laughs> but I, but I've cut way back. Yeah. Like I don't drink when I do stand up. So sure. if I go on the road and do stand up well, for I mean, a weekend. Not, I don't not, drink the whole weekend. Yeah, you're not the ripped horn variety yeah. of drinker. Yeah, right? I don't drink the whole weekend. Yeah. I'm on and, the road every weekend, and so you, I only you, really drink on Mondays and Tuesdays. Yeah, you may we call this sort of incipient. Like you may have have some problems with your relationship with it, but you're still having lost control. Yeah, I don't even think I have problems with my relationship with it now. Right. Yeah. And I think when I was drinking too much, it was kind of like a delayed realization that I was 40. Like I was still thinking, it was kind of like, I was still thought I was sort of like Party. in college yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. And it just kind of the party kept going a little maybe longer than it should have. Yep. And, uh, and now I'm kind of realizing that I feel so much better if I haven't had, you know, a drink like in uh, a week which is, you know, happens every couple of years. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, but, you know I, and, and when I do drink, I try not to go crazy. Yeah, good. And, and I, feel, I feel pretty good now, yeah. No, you're the, just, you got it before it became a problem. Yeah. Quite literally. Now, that being said, like, I think, like, a certain amount of uh, depression, anxiety, whatever you want to call it, it um, for me personally, like, I think it's very creatively uh, helpful. Helps, yeah. It's a productive does, thing. Does the comedy m help you manage it? 
it, and there was the, the is the laugh therapeutic it, it's the definitely the, it's, it helps me manage, manage it it's definitely a cathartic experience doing stand up it's an adrenaline rush that makes me feel better I feel great after the show uh, leading up to the show I feel nerves and anxiety and Every after show, the show all I feel, these years yeah after the show Woo. I feel great all these years you yeah. still feel nervous yeah yeah Isn't that funny yeah it's it's uh it's you know uh, uh there's definitely some energy there but you know I, I, I even outside of that like just like the idea of thinking about dark thoughts or, or you know, we're all going to die. Thinking about that is sort of like a, a comedy, you know, Killer. machine. <laughs> no, oh, no, it it makes it. Because you, know, you, oh, you yeah. need to think about the dark things. Oh, interesting. And then try to make f fun of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so when you when you think about, uh, and, and I think, you know, the, 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 the concept of impending doom, right? Yeah. You know, the fact that we are running out of time is a big motivator for me. You know, like I can't really procrastinate and do it later because like, you know, I could be dead later, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. And I got a lot of shit I want to do yeah. before that happens. That's good. So, you know, I, I think like it's like, I, I do think that if we n never died, like if there was no such thing as death, if we were going to live forever and we knew that, I think nothing would have ever been accomplished yeah. in human yeah. civilization. Right. We wouldn't have built the pyramids. We wouldn't have invented the the wheel. We'd just be sitting around on the ground, you know, eating eating like you know grass or something Pyramid like that. Is, pyramids yeah. probably not because those are for dead people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the aliens did that. Anyways, oh. but yeah. yeah. So interesting. That's fascinating to me. And so yeah. you use it, and I I I believe that the gratitude and forgiveness, those sorts of emotions, are extremely important for people. And that keeps it from wearing you down. Yeah. The the negativity. Yeah. And so how nice that you can use it as a creative force too. It's really interesting. Yeah. And that's that's something that's important for everybody. I think is to come to terms with that reality and yeah. to, to use it creatively. Sounds. The other thing that I've noticed happening is, you know, I'm 48 now, and I'm just sort of getting to that time in my life where I'm realizing like. Like when I was young, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I was super stressed because I was really stressed out about the future. Yeah. And now there's just, you know, so much less of my future yes. to ruin. Yes. So, yes. I mean, and, I don't, and you've achieved a lot. You should yeah. feel sort of you should be have a chance to sort of take that in and when, feel good about it. Yeah, that. when I was in my 20s, I thought, okay, if I'm not successful now, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? Right. But now like, you know, like what I got like 11 years left or something like that. I mean, you know, I'm fine. A few more. No, but I mean, I'm just saying like, you know. How, da how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying though, it's kind of like, I do feel now that like, you know, I've gotten to almost 50 and you know, if, if, if for whatever reason I stopped working, well, you know, I'd probably find a, something, a nice hobby. Oh, you know, sure. I'd be very relaxed, like carving, like whittling ducks. That'd be your thing. Little duck ducks. whittling. Yeah, get into like carving balsa duck wood decoys. ducks. Yeah, <laughs> like on a park yeah, bench killer, somewhere. Of ducks. And I'd be happy with that. I, I have a crazy question. I don't even know why I'm asking it, but have you ever worked with Paul Rubens? I've never met Paul Rubens, but I, I love I love Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, I yeah. just got a feeling you guys would have some pretty interesting yeah stuff together. I, I, I love him. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, Bert Dubrow loved him too, so and, and I think has worked with him. But oh, he has? I think so, yeah. I don't think I knew that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm jealous of Bert. Yeah. I'm going to take a little break to tell you about our sponsors at Bespoke Post. Now, uh, you can start a new routine this winter. Upgrade your everyday life with a monthly box of awesome from Bespoke Post. These are carefully selected bespoke boxes. They're awesome. They send guys only the best stuff every month. So whether you're looking to commemorate an occasion with a champagne saber or toast perfectly aged winter cocktails, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, outdoor gear, Box of Awesome is truly awesome. They've carefully built collections of every part that will serve every part of your life. Get started. Take the quick quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories travel and you know bar there the travel one is the one i really dug it's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel anytime each box costs only 45 dollars, but has over 70 dollars worth of gear inside get 20 percent off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com enter the code dr drew d-r-e-d-r-e-w at checkout again that is boxofawesome.com code dr drew for 20 percent off your first box it's time to get back to the show let's do it all right, let's um, let's go to the, our next uh, phase here, Tom. Yeah. Okay. This is the part where it's it's no longer friends, no longer fun. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, you, you think you had some dark thoughts before? Uh, your mom's house mm -hmm. brings you uh, plenty, plenty okay. of 
cool people to stimulate your dark thoughts. Yeah, okay. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So this is a video entitled Being Friends with Wolves. Okay. Oh, wow. I like mm -hmm. that. Here it is. Yeah, we're going to start you off a little light. Just let me know what you think of this. These are shocking videos. Uh, maybe not. You just yeah. tell, give us your thoughts about these okay. cool people. Being friends with wolves. Yeah. Crouched down and made sure to keep oh, as I oh, enter oh. the wolves' territory. Oh. I am so oh, excited. Monitor went I up. crouched down and made sure to keep my energy calm. It's important to greet a bit? wolf openly. I don't. It looks like so it to me. So they can learn everything about you. Yeah, but I don't want to watch it either. This means keeping low. I don't want to so see. So you well, are less She's frightening. masturbating the wolf. She's oh. masturbating. Oh, that's what she's no, doing. No, no, she's not. No, that's no, no. what it, it looks like. No, this like. is a how-to on how to befriend wild wolves. Okay. Is she not masturbating the wolf? Not in that. Clip. Is that a wild wolf? That is a wild wolf. That's You're a wild from wolf. Canada, that's a you, wild you know what wolf. wild wolves in the snow look like. Well, I figured Canada. they were at the zoo or something like that. All right, so keep going. Wait, is it going to bite her? I don't, I don't want to see it bite her face. No, no, no. no. There, there's, there's, this is, there's no blood. No there's gruesome. No okay. gruesome gore. It, it made me a little nervous too. Okay. And this stuff. What was she? Look what she was doing to that dog a few seconds ago. Suddenly, it gets, now, it it gets crazy. Not knowing what's going to happen, the anticipation of it's, it is it's actually terrifying. Me. Yeah, it's bothering me. I'm terrified right now. Okay, go ahead. When wolves greet, they will want to lick inside your oh, mouth. Oh. This is perfectly normal for them, and okay. this is what they do to one another on oh, a daily okay. basis. Wow. If you can tolerate it, you should allow this, as they will trust you more and can learn everything about you as a person. Okay. Body movements should be calm and fluid. The Sharp other mouth movements kiss. will All frighten right. and shock them, making you look threatening. So yeah. gently, gently is the answer. Yeah, okay. This is why women are often more readily accepted by wolves than men, yeah. as men naturally exhibit heavier movements, have a taller stature, and a deeper voice. These are wild wolves? Yeah, these are wild so wolves. So far, I like this, actually. Yes, I know. Yeah. So far, it's like I'm stunned. Yeah. yeah. And so here are some tips and tricks on how to make sure that, you know, you come out of the experience alive. Uh-oh. This there is... were lower ranking wolves and it was important to make sure I greeted the wolves in order of ranking and make sure to ignore the lower wolves when the leaders approached, which is a little sad, <laughs> but safer for them as it means they will be told off far less. Told off? Mm -hmm. Okay. Despite Marit being the leading female, Braga the large male was indeed top of the pack, and he had decided that my ear uh -oh. and tummy tickles uh -oh. should be just for him, uh -oh. and was not slow in coming forward with his snarls and piercing how did, stares how did she at Marit not... to let her know that he wasn't happy how did she that she was commanding out? my attention. How does that woman not just lose it right then? Yeah. Well, she, she's... Yeah. Okay. Is this it? It's quite hard to keep still during a wolf altercation, no especially kidding. when it's happening right in front of your face, no. all teeth and snaps. Oh but it's very God. important not to move in case of redirected aggression onto you. The altercations only lasted a little while and it soon all died down. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, that's cool. I don't believe they're wild wolves, though. I just think that she's like at like a zoo or something. No, this is a. I, I believe this is a Norwegian uh, wildlife national park. Yeah, but yeah, still. it's like some park, and they like they got they got like coin operated machines full of you know kibbles and bits right behind her. Yeah, when you go when you go uh, to the front, there's a wax. You get a yeah. wax copy of the yeah. wolf. Yeah, exactly. That's. All right, yeah. is that that? Yeah, that's the end of this one. Well, right. that, that was a very nice video. Yes, that was. So I'm well, maybe we'll so nice. I'm almost confused as to why you showed it to me. Cleanse your palate, please, with <laughs> the poo the poo diver, just for a second, just so Tom get a load of the kinds of. I pool. like that video. You want to go straight? I, I to was the... go straight to pool poo diver. Just no, so no, gets I, a sense. really okay. But I, I do like some nice videos. We, nice, we can build up. We can build up. Okay. Let's Whatever build. you want to do, Drew. I, I work for you. Let's just, build. I'd say give him a glimpse of it, just a glimpse, and then we'll come return to it later. Here it is. Okay. okay. Poo diver. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See in the sewers. Okay. Enough. Enough. Nice. Good enough. Poo Tom. diver. Poo yep. diver. In leather. Uh, that is wild stuff. <laughs> it's, it's wild. Yeah. Let's go on with uh, Cool Charles from Match.com. Poo diver. Okay. Yeah. I got to admit that wolf thing, I was expecting some shocking ending. Right. That, was it, that was That was actually kind of nice. But when we go back to Poo Diver, you're going to show Tom the, the hair version of the Poo Diver. Yes. The hair. Hair. Uh, Yep, the that's, toupee. That's later, yes, that's later yes. in the clip. Okay, yeah. good. Here we go. Guy. This is right, cool, so, Charles. So a, a little, cool dude. Set, a little setup on this is uh, this uh, lady was talking to cool Charles over here on Match.com, and then instead of sending her a text, he decides to send her a video. Here he is. Okay. 
What's going on? It's Charles from Match. Just wanted to do a video instead of a text or a phone call. I've been here, I don't know, since 7.30 doing some little video that, uh, editing, I should say, editing some video that's going to be going up on YouTube. Okay. My, so actually, my good. new office, I really like it, not going to lie, and it's got this really cool view. Where are we now? There we go. Hey. Uh, there right. we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Was well, he funny? <laughs> um, anyway, we haven't talked, I think, since Saturday. So uh, tonight, I'm looking at Lily's in Union Square. Oh, I'll say around 8 o'clock, 8.15. And I'm going to be in a fantastic mood then because I have so much to do. I'm looking at my to-do list all around. I've, like, posted I'm, I'm tiring of Charles. Else, and I'm... I got my, my ice latte. <laughs> oh. Wow, this guy's pretty He's pretty, pretty slick. cool. Slick, he's got a nice view. But anyway, uh, shoot me a text and let me know if 8 o'clock works. I could do 8.30, but a little bit early it might be tough because I, I do have a lot to do. So uh, shoot me a call. And did I say my name in the beginning? It's Charles. I feel so bad for this guy. How did this end up on the internet? So this because, girl uh, saw this and went, oh, I'm going to show this to everybody. Yeah, she posted it on Twitter, and he actually <laughs> reminded us of, a, of one of the original cool guys. Does he remind you of anyone that you've seen before, Drew? Uh, it kind of does, but I can't place it. Is that good morning, oh, Julia? There. Yes, yes, it's yes. Me, Joe. Just wanted to say hi. Wish you a great day. Tell you that meeting you yesterday and getting a look at you was probably one of the greatest moments this, of my life. This doesn't end well. You Tom. were so beautiful. This does not end. You don't well. know how beautiful. Over a few days, me. more and I more mean, just, aggressive, oh, aggressive videos come her way. Oh yeah. Can you show us where? Yeah. But it's been sitting in my mind when you said to me you want to go back with your ex-boyfriend. Please erase him from your memory. Don't ever go back in the past. I know, because I've been there. Here we and go. I understand when you know you're trying to find somebody and you go on dates. Stalker. Nothing compares to your ex, but there is that better person out there. Take me to and where Julia, he goes. I how, promise you, how, it is me. Oh God, how bad it gets. He gets well, pretty intense. Anyhow. I'm heading off to work. This is my cute little home. Everything you see behind me, I built everything. Every square nice. inch from crown molding to Tom's chair rail. Quite to handy. Floors, yeah. to lighting, to plumbing, mm -hmm. doors, cool, windows. Cool, cool guy fans, too. Total package, right? right. Yeah. So yeah. which one of those videos would you rather get? Would you rather get Charles or would you rather get uh, Joe? I'd rather as Charles is just uncomfortable. I feel sad for him. Joe, I can see where this is going right away. This, this guy, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, he's, I mean... You know, honestly, uh, you like Joe. I mean, I wouldn't want to get either of those videos. I would not. Sent so to me. this is the type of guy you get. No, if I was a lady, angry. yeah, if I was a nice lady, uh -huh. maybe, uh, maybe I'd, I'd be maybe more into it. But, but as, a, as you are, me but, as a, but go, take Tom to where Joe goes. Yeah, with Joe when he gets a little less. Uh, I don't know when he's she's not responding. Open up your heart oh, God. to me. In no, your no, arms. I mean that different video, not this video. Oh, okay. The other one where he where he gets aggressive. Where oh. he's uh, been disappointed by her lack of responsiveness. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I have that one. Where do you get it? these but I videos? Think, but I think this is uh, send these are in. just on the internet, or people send them in. I nice. Think this is Joe's natural progression. Uh oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. oh my god. Oh wow. What's this? <gasps> what is this? Is this the new Star Wars? Or do they have ham boning in Canada, Tom? What's ham boning? You're about to see. Look what the boner. Look at my shoulder. That kind of visual. Okay. All right. A little ASMR. Nice. That was. I That's don't think. Nice. That, I think that was a seizure. Yeah. I like that. Is this in the other room or? Yeah, is I he nearby? Is, it, is this in the other studio? <laughs> oh, that's it. That is not okay. Wow. What, who is? What is this from? I don't know. It's nice though. I like <laughs> that one. That's the first one that. It, it it is the kind of thing you'd find up in Canada, I suppose. This is the first one that makes sense that you're playing it during the show to me. You know, yeah, the yeah. other one was kind of like the wolves was like yeah. a real nice Audubon or a, not Audubon, but a nature. Yes, yes. Felt like yeah. Why it's National Geographic? Why are we looking at Excuse that? Me. Yeah. Now the last one was kind of weird. Challenging, yeah. But this but is. But this one feels like uh, fucked up in the right way. Yes, this yeah. is fucked up in the right way. This yeah. looks like. Uh, hey, sort you of, want to play tic tac toe in my face, man? This is my Sick. friend Robert. Sick. Robert Paul Champagne. Oh. And you put this is your X, buddy? My buddy. X. Okay. Oh, yeah. What's he doing? 
He's he's trying to maim himself. Oh my god! Now I think is he cutting himself? No, he's playing tic tac toe in his face. Oh okay. Um, yeah. Does it does it say pig on his chest also? Yeah. You want to put you yeah. want to put pig on him, man? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pig. Yeah, let me know, man. Or does it say slut? It says slut. Okay. Yeah, pig. Well, that's good. But hold on. I think I know that room. I I think that's the bird room, guys. I think that is the bird room. I do. And you notice there's a window with sun coming through, which is a rare, rare sighting in his apartment. Are you sure that's sun? Is that a light? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I, I mean, think, I think the, you would know better than I would. I think that's the bird room. It sure so is went, weird times we're living in, isn't it? Like, I, I went and visited this young man. Yeah. I went to New York and, and went to his house. Uh-huh. And I said hi. Was he just sort of needed some help from you? Or? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting times we're living in, though, that everyone's got these cameras. They can upload to everybody. Yeah. We're sharing all this information. We're looking at all of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, just, you know... I'm not this sure. This is just flying around. We're I'm all not connected. Sure we were meant to see all this. Yeah. No, it's yeah. it's interesting. Black guys who love to fuck and fuck good. Okay. If you're a hot black guy and you want to fuck me at twenty three ninety five, if you want to move in, you can move in, but you gotta fuck me. I need I need to be fucked a lot, man. Get rid free food, free rent, and everything else, man. Here's a deal, man. Now, he Do you pick me, all the videos, Drew? No, the I show, don't pick or? any videos. None. No. Zero. They're okay. sent in by the fans. Yeah. And uh, Nadav t- takes care of picking them now. Okay, cool. I feel kind of good that you weren't involved in choosing this video. Uh, you should be. Yeah. But uh, it feels like it would be odd if you had said, ah, yeah, let's let's play this one. Well, I did bring up the poo video. Yeah, yeah. That, so that makes fair. a little more sense. Yeah. B- but uh, Robert Paul here mm-hmm. tells me that he really didn't mean it when he said this. Yeah. Okay. He really didn't because I asked him. I said, "Do you you're asking for people to sh- pee on you and beat you? Do you mean it? Oh no, no. I just having fun. Just goofing around. Just yeah. goofing around. Yeah. It's, As is the custom. Just kind of having fun." All right, uh, should we see dressing up as baby? And this sure. one, this one is yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, here we go. This whole thing is. My name is Phil, and I like to dress as a baby. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. I like to wear nappies. It's uh-huh. like a regressor. It's uh-huh. actually very comfortable. Yeah. I just like to sit in them. Yeah. Yep, I support yep. Phil's lifestyle choice. Yes. Clearly, you do, honey. I like this. You like this one? This one I like. These guys are always interesting. Yeah. I found out he liked to dress as a baby after being together for about a year. Yeah. When I see him wearing his nappy, I kind of feel indifferent. Yeah. I like to pee in them, but <laughs> yeah, of course you not do. the other stuff. Uh-huh. Not the, he doesn't shit in them. It's just okay. not He's me draw, at the Draw the line somewhere, yeah. Tom. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, Stern was playing a bunch of M- ASMR videos on, on the show today. Yeah, I don't know what that stands for. What does it stand for? It's, it's these whispering videos. Okay. ASMR. What does ASMR stand for? You guys know? Yeah, we'll Google it. Right All right, uh, it, and uh, it's, <laughs> have you ever heard them? Uh, no, no, I don't know what that is. Oh, uh, maybe you guys could play a less ASMR. It's very bizarre ASMR. I mean, that white guy uh, that looked like Santa was doing some ASMR. No, that was not AS. I don't know what that was. That was a seizure. That was, ASMR, that was a neurological okay. problem. All right, uh, ASMR definition stands for autonomous sensory. What? Meridian response. Okay. I don't think that's what this is. God, there's just so much stuff to know. Yes, there is. There is, you my know? friend. It's about so a- many things. ASMR are essentially these whispering videos. Yeah. And uh, a lot of them are like mommies talk, tucking babies in and yeah. stuff. So ASMR kind of reminds me of the same stuff. Sometimes I wonder if the internet didn't exist, if a lot of these things wouldn't exist. Like I think a lot of these they things... They would happen, but we would not know about it. But I'm it. wondering even if, if also they, they exist more than they would exist because people are They're doing reinforced. it for attention. Yeah, I think you're right. And the I fact mean, that we're watching... Robert Paul Champagne would not be putting out so much costume video. He would, would the guy be swimming in poo? Would be the guy be dressing as a baby if he didn't know well, that people a, were watching? The baby thing does happen as a fetish, but let's look at the poo thing for a second. Yeah, let's actually... I, let's I was going to say I would like to yeah, look at that a bit more. He would like to see the... Okay. Yeah. And uh, that is a lot of poo. That is a cesspool diver. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And what's he doing? Is he like just sort of working down there or something? Oh, Ooh, my he gosh. Went under water? Is and that the right do- word? What's he doing down there? Has he got to fix something? I or? don't know. It's, no, no. He's uh, just enjoying it. He's doing it for fun, huh? Yeah, for fun. His eyes are exposed. I, which I find extraordinary and doesn't difficult that, to understand. Doesn't that mean that like you get bacteria in your eyes? Yeah, and you yeah. Get, like some sort of. Yes. Uh, you know, bubonic plague or something like that? at least. Oh, look, we found some hair. Look, oh, there's hair in there. Oh, my God. This is hard to watch. So that is a person that's doing this for the some... Oh. 
Yeah, I don't understand that. No. Do you, now, the question was, if there was a video, not a video camera, would he have done it? No, no, I don't. You don't think so? I, I don't think so. Okay. I also almost almost want to question whether or not it's even real poo. I mean, it could just be like mud or something. Oh, I feel better about that. Yeah, it's, it's just sort see, of like you know, an you know elaborate way, prank, you know? You know the way your brain won't let you believe that your friends have died? That's the same thing. Yeah. You're looking at this and can't believe that somebody would be in poo. Yeah, I just don't think that there'd be any reason to do that. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. I'm glad I saw that, though. Does it, it, that video, the, the website was called The Live Leak. Yeah. Uh, do, are they, do they specialize in this sort of thing? Uh, yeah, those should, kinds of videos. It's like an underground YouTube. It should be YouTube called the live stuff. dump, not the live leak. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I wonder yeah. if it's sort of a... But I, I, I am glad I, sh I saw that. All right. The ribs are back, everybody. And I'm glad you showed me that. Mc I'm glad you're glad, too. I wasn't expecting that today. No. It's challenging. Though, and it? uh, I like the way, I like the direction that you're taking the Thank new you. show. Thank you. Dr. Drew. McRibs are back. Let's see, take a look I at I love that. the scatological content. Mm -hmm. yeah. I knew you would. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very proud. <laughs> McRibs are back. Let's look at that. Okay. Yeah, so you know, McRibs are in season and everyone's excited. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys love McRibs or love it as much as this guy. Okay. Ooh. Oh, what the hell? That looks like the last video. Yeah. Let's take a dive in that. But, uh, yeah. Oh, the, he's all messy. That's not a yes, very. Yes. You've got to clean it. You know, you don't want messy hands when you're. Not when you're eating McRib. A McRib, yeah. Go ahead. So, yeah, I, I've, I've had a McRib. Oh, come on. What's, oh, okay, guys. Come on. Okay, all right. That's enough. <laughs> Even I draw the line somewhere. Was that you, Dr. Drew? That was not me, nor did I approve that clip. That, that wasn't you? Uh, no. I do not endorse. Bone in a McRib? No. Is that boneless ribs in there? <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> yeah. They love you, Tom. You're making them very happy. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad somebody's happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, hey, see, this I, is your show, man. They love... You allowed that to happen. No, no. <laughs> they, they love doing that to <laughs> me and my guests. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Like if we can be properly shamed or yeah. properly brought to near vomit like yeah. they're just sort of just so it's like you're choking it yeah. down nothing makes them happier surprisingly edgy around here surprisingly so Let's i mean i know I, I just do you ever think that maybe that could like sort of like show up on tmz or something like that that me talking I dr didn't... drew looking at mick rib boning fetish films on his show you know I don't know what's that, happening. That to clear, Dr. Drew. That really wouldn't happen, but <laughs> you saying that might. <laughs> so, so. Is Dr. Drew okay? <laughs> <laughs> Ever since he's been doing After Dark, yeah. there's concerns. <laughs> That's uh, cool. Tom Green yeah. raises a, yeah. it raises a red flag. Now, anyways, regardless of of, of whether or not, uh, where where can I see that video again? No, no, no. I'm just can't. like for later, like when I get home. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe e fucked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just send uh, me send me a link. Let's do some voice messages. Yeah. We're gonna get back to planet Earth here. Yeah. Here we go. Voice messages. Voice messages. All right. Hey, Doctor Drew. This is Morgan. Hi, Morgan. So whenever I'm laying in bed, stroking my penis, uh. you know. There you go. Trying to make the white piss come out the front butt. Okay. Sometimes, right before I'm gonna, you know, come, I get, you know, kind of tense in my legs like most people do. Mm -hmm. And when I really tense my legs, sometimes I can get my kneecap to pop. And yeah. when I time my kneecap to pop yeah. exactly the time as my white yeah. piss, yeah. it yeah. greatly intensifies the feeling. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, Dr. Drew. Yeah. This time beat me. Gotcha. Yeah. See, he's like, he making the Robert Paul Champagne reference yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know of any such thing. So I'm no, just, no, that, I'm, that, uh, that happens. It happens to you. I'm going to call it bogus. <laughs> I'm going to just call it bogus. <laughs> Let's get another one. Hey, Dr. Drew. This is Jordan from Birmingham, Alabama. Hi, Jordan. And I got a quick question about my poop. I've noticed that throughout the day when I don't have my coffee, it's just super, super difficult. It's all hard, and uh, it doesn't yeah. really fit out my asshole. But when I do have coffee, it's like super runny, mm -hmm. and I need a good, good in-between. Now, I know I can get some stool softener, 
Right. But that kind of upsets my stomach. Okay. Uh, if you wouldn't mind giving me some tips and tricks on how to get a good happy medium from my okay. food, Okay, got really it. Metamucil, it. right? Thank Metamucil you. is exactly what I was going to recommend. Yeah. Metamucil yeah. would be a great, yeah. and maybe, they back in the day, they used to use coffee as a laxative. It yeah. was actually, so maybe coffee and maybe spread your coffee out a little bit. Yeah. And then Metamucil, which is a non-absorbable bulk, take a bunch of that in the morning, maybe even some in the evening, and that should take care of that. Fiber, right? A any, listen carefully. You yeah. with me? It's what I recommended to you, sir. Good fiber. Good, not absorbable. Or just fiber. eat more vegetables. You can yeah, put bulk in your diet. It's another way yeah. to do it too. But I, I, the, this kind of thing that, that he's describing, Metamucil, might be a little bit better for. Yeah. Next up, Brand. You can always use Brand also. Hi, Dr. Drew. This is Andrew from Utah. I'm a big fan. And mm -hmm. I am calling because I am confused about a possible medical situation with my wife. So every time she works out, even a little bit, we're talking like jog a quarter of a mile. I'm not in the best shape, but I try to get her to get out with me. But she literally will violently vomit Ooh. Um, for hours afterwards. Whoa. And even like pulling weeds in the hot weather sometimes will put her over the edge. My goodness. And I'm curious if that's a version of asthma. She doesn't have no. hyperventilation issues. No, no, I don't no, know no, a lot no. about asthma, but no. I'm wondering if she, what could be the biological response that provokes her to... Yeah. literally violently throw up and be sick for like six hours afterwards at almost any like more strain right. than moving groceries out of the car right. anything past that and she's sick um let me know i'm a huge fan of the podcast and thank you bye okay she should see a gastroenterologist because any kind of unexplained vomiting needs an explanation and this is a very unusual symptom there are muscle disorders that can be associated with various kinds of weird metabolic disturbances and I'm wondering if she maybe has a genetic syndrome, but that's a, that's a sort of down the line consideration. The first order of business is try to figure out why the vomiting. And uh, that could even be gallbladder disease. It could be a lot of different things. It could yeah. be gastritis, esophagitis. I, I, and I, I, don't, I need to know a lot more about her and medications and that sort of thing. But by all means, see a gastroenterologist. That's kind of a serious symptom. And particularly if she has one of these muscle syndromes that can be there's some be some bizarre muscle biologies that can have very very strange symptoms associated. Now, as a doctor, do you do you do you find this is something that happens because where, like for me personally, if I were to vomit for yeah. six hours, yes, on a regular basis, or when I exerted myself, I would immediately go to the doctor. Yes, yes, and it's I wouldn't like wait around a couple it, of months and then call into a podcast and ask. I know it. it's weird how people do that. Yeah, it, it's it it's, that doesn't it, air for it, like a few weeks it, after it's, I call. It's mortifying you know? to me. Like I would be immediately at the or, doctor. Or they will call with extremely complex psychiatric problems that yeah. would take a few years to manage and sort through. Yeah. Like, solve it now. Yeah. It's like, no, no. So di yeah. how do you diagnose that? What's going on through people's minds that like when they, they don't they, seek they, medical attention? Is it they don't have health insurance? Not Is usually. it they're afraid of the no. cost of going it's to a doctor? Is it they're they, afraid of what kind of answer they're going to that, get? There's that, and yeah. men, men don't, we don't like going to doctors at all, but yeah. this is a woman. Uh, it's their fear of, of the cost, and that fear is usually very unfounded. Yeah. And they end up using costly systems instead, which are like emergency rooms and that sort of thing, which are expensive, but you yeah. don't have to do that. And then it gets worse, and then it ends up costing and, more. And right. Like, yeah. And, and th there's it's a lot of it is lack of knowledge. Yeah. A lot of it is lack of understanding how to use healthcare, which is a stunning. People don't know how to use healthcare anymore. Yeah. So there you go. They call a call a podcast i'm alive because of my paranoia because i went to the doctor right away mm -hmm. like and when i felt sick mm -hmm. did you feel sick with your with your testicular i cancer? felt like some mm, something pain. wasn't right oh yeah, yeah. pain some pain yeah See? which is not a You're common symptom of that You're enlightened yeah it's something, voice message something how long would you have had to wait for your testicular surgery if you used the canadian healthcare system uh it would have been fine yeah i mean how look, long i i know i know i mean we could talk about this in in in, in depth I am a huge fan of the Canadian healthcare system. So why did you have your surgery down here then? Well, I lived down here. Mm. Would have been weird to go home mm. to, to to go back there because I was living here. So how long do you think you would have had to wait for the surgery? Uh it wouldn't have been uh, an exorbitant amount of time. You know, maybe you know it wouldn't have been an outrageous amount of time. Um, how long did you wait here? Uh, I got it pretty much right away. Yeah, the same day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But there's, I, th I, I think there's. You know, I think it's it's a complex issue. It is a complex you know, issue. Like, for instance, of... I would have waited a lot longer here if I didn't have health insurance. Possibly. I wouldn't have let that. 
I because no, I'm saying like if I was same, one of the same, if I was one of the millions and millions no, and millions. I'm telling of you, that same people. doctor works at a county facility. You could have had the whole thing done for free. But what I'm saying is, if I'm one of the millions of uninsured people, uninsured, you could have gone to the county hospital, had the same thing done. But I probably wouldn't have because I would have been afraid to go right. because I didn't have health insurance. Right. Whereas it, in it, Canada, I would have had my me, my right. government issued but health if, card, and I would have gone to the doctor right away and probably been yeah, better off. But if people knew how to use healthcare here, even when they don't have insurance, mm -hmm. and by the way, now you can sign up for Obamacare for a very limited expense and it's covered. Um, so it's, it's again, it's lack of understanding how, the, how to yeah. use the system. I just know here. so many people who don't have health insurance who... Why, why, like, would, why would they not get California care in, the day, in this day and age? It's, it, I have so many people that have that kind of, like friends that work freelancers as, you why? know, they have that, but that doesn't, it never works. Like they California go, care? well, they go, oh, I called and they said, oh, it's not, I can't go to this doctor and oh. it's just a well, big yeah. run yeah. around. Yes, They're always confused true. about everything. That's true. Working Everything's always confusing. Working the system So it just seems kind of like, you know, yes. wouldn't it be nice if you could just go to the doctor and get it taken care of? But, yes. yes so, right. now, but, and, and I'm just, and I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not taking a position on this. I'm just pointing out the, the trade-offs and the complexities. Yeah, You're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That it would be nicer if they were not so confusing. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I think that is part of the problem. Yeah. Because people don't know how to use the system. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Another voice message. Hi, it's Michelle. Dr. Drew, I've been on uh, medicine for BV um, for about two months now orally and vaginally and I was wondering um, my gynecologist now wants me to try an over-the-counter boric acid yes, yes. yeah even the name sounds scary I was wondering what is your take on um, what this could potentially do to um, any of my organs no, or no, it's gonna be fine. Didn't any you have side this, did, did, I, did I answer would, her question do not attempt it no. She's thinking it's acid. No, it's not. It's, it's not it's, acid. She's talking about bacterial vaginosis, which can be hard to clear up sometimes. Bacterial vaginosis. If this is a gynecologist, follow what he or she says. They, they, they're, she's not making a recommendation casually on this kind of thing. It's hard to clear that up. Luckily, yeah. we she, don't got to worry about that. We don't got to worry about that. That's one of the. If we did, if men had to take care of an internal system like that, God only knows. Because huh. right? men don't have vaginas. Correct. If yeah. we did, though, think about think yeah. about the mayhem. Yeah. It would, be, it would be weird if we had vaginas. It would be weird. Yeah, it would be a weird thing. One more. Hey, Daddy. It's Patrick from uh, Colorado. My buddy Tim says that you can put something in your ass up to seven inches before you cause serious damage. And I know to the okay symbols about what you want. I just wanted to ask your opinion on that. Thank you. Keep in mind. You, can, you can hurt yourself even with relatively not so long yeah. uh, problems uh, things can you can perforate your colon you can and, and the colon goes like this it go, you go up and then yeah. it has a big s in it yeah it's called the sigmoid yours colon. does or everybody's everybody's yeah and that you know once you get up past the rectum you got the sigmoid and that turn yeah can get missed sometimes yeah. and people can hurt themselves have you ever taken that turn I had a colonoscopy on Friday, yeah. <laughs> so I've just taken that turn. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it up. As a matter of fact, you guys brought it up. I'm just throwing <laughs> but, shit out there. But I've no never, pun intended. Never taken it the way his buddy Tim or yeah, whatever yeah, his name was yeah. said. Tom, a pleasure always. <laughs> <laughs> with that, I with love that, the new show. I love it. I love the turn this show has taken. Yes, this show. Yeah. We, it's it. It takes very All sharp turns. turns. Yes, yeah, take sharp turns. Every kind of turn you can imagine. Yes, and I, yeah. and, I and I appreciate you coming in and sharing your thoughts and feelings and being a part of this. I, I really appreciate do. it. Thank you. And um, let's keep our, speaking of thoughts and feelings, let's keep good thoughts in our minds for our friends, John and Howard. And John and Howard. That we uh, miss. Rest in peace. And they were the important people in our lives. Yeah. Both of us. Yeah. They were a very important, big part of both of our lives. And uh, and uh, it's uh, going to be uh, weird going forward with them uh, without them here. We're going to have to do some well, uh, could, cool stuff in their memory say, and live a, our lives and uh, try a, to make them proud. A living tribute. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I'll try to do the same. Yeah. So. And uh, I'm on tour now, by the way, which I, I, I wish, wish Howard could, uh, you know, I, I'm glad that Howard got to see the last 10 years of my stand up because he was always such a huge proponent of stand-up comedy you know he owned comedy clubs early in the days he uh, represented a lot of comedians including people like uh, Kimmel Carolla Kimmel Carolla M M Mike Mike McDonald yeah. uh, Harlan Williams um, Bullard yeah um, Mike Bullard Pat Bullard so but uh, yeah so um, I'm on the road so I, I'm, I've got shows coming up in uh, all year go to tomgreen.com 
click on the tour page, and uh, I'm going all over the country all you're, year. You do anything locally here? I'll, I'll I'll be all. I'm always jumping up at the you know at the at the clubs in Hollywood and doing stand. Do you go to the Ice House ever? Or? I do. Yeah. I'll let me let me know because that's my backyard. I think I'll be doing a like a. a not for a little while, but I'm doing it a night there. Please, so, yeah. well, I'll show up. Yep. That'd be great. Thanks, Drew. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Doctor. We'll see you next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.